All right, everybody, don't drop that fast forward button. The sponsorship roll call is about to begin. Energy Consulting Limited provides complete project management and general contracting services to a variety of private sector clients on both commercial and residential construction projects. They act as the owner's representatives through the planning, design, budgeting, scheduling, construction, and occupancy processes. Clients appreciate their open, honest, and flexible approach to achieving their project goals. Although they're located in Surrey, BC, Energy works on projects all over the province, including the growing cities of the north and the beautiful coastal towns of Vancouver Island. They're always excited to explore new places and develop relationships with professionals wherever their clients' interests may be. Abacus North is a firm that specializes in mortgage banking solutions for complex projects. In addition to providing financing solutions in a traditional mortgage broker capacity, Abacus North provides direct loans that range from $2 million to $25 million. On a syndicated basis, they provide mortgage banking solutions up to $300 million. In most cases, their in-house capital solutions can bridge financing gaps that traditional lenders are unable to service. They specialize in providing land acquisition loans, construction financing for large-scale developments, income-producing properties, and single-purpose facilities. With a portfolio that includes high-rise, mid-rise, and low-rise condominiums, townhouse developments, shopping centers, agricultural properties, industrial developments, and medical marijuana facilities, Abacus North is at the forefront of creative mortgage banking solutions with a focus on fostering long-term relationships. They are a multifaceted organization that services domestic and international clients with their mortgage banking needs. Complex financing solutions require analytical thinking well beyond a typical mortgage broker relationship. As a result, they focus on providing engineered solutions for their client. Their key differentiation strategy is that they assist clients in actively managing the capital stack in order to minimize borrowing costs while maximizing flexibility. Abacus North focuses on national and global opportunities. Ascentia CPA has a team of new-gen chartered professional accountants that are dedicated to advancing companies using expertise combined with emerging technologies. The team at Ascentia will implement the latest accounting technologies, allowing you to not only run a business, but to run a smart business that will excel in your industry. Their focus is to provide growth-centric, value-added, and timely accounting services for businesses as well as individuals across Canada. Unlike standard accounting firms, by embracing cloud-based software, the team at Ascentia will provide you with real-time accounting information on a secure platform that is accessible anywhere at any time, allowing you to make better informed decisions and gain more controlled overview of your financial data. The reliability and expertise you'll experience with the professionals at Ascentia will assist you in the preparation of corporate and personal tax returns, financial statements, bookkeeping, government filings, tax and estate planning, as well as business advisory services. For more information on the advantages of online accounting and to book a complimentary meeting online, be sure to visit ascentiacpa.ca. We are... I. All right, everybody, good morning. Day 25 on the carnivore diet. As you can probably tell, it's morning time, 6.09 a.m., and I'm driving in the car right now. I thought that I would uh, record this while I'm driving to be able to kill two birds with one stone because I got a little bit of a busy morning, and I want to be able to drop this update to everybody. So um, how do I feel? Like, what's going on? A lot of people keep asking me, like, how come you haven't been updating a little bit more? But um, I've been feeling the last uh, couple days that I just really need something else. And I thought it was from the weekend that I had. So I wanted to kind of dive into it for a few more days to see if I still felt that same way. So uh, what happened on the weekend is that I knew on Saturday that I was going hiking. And uh, the one thing I noticed about the carnivore diet is it's really hard to hike like a substantial amount of time and be on the carnivore diet and just bring meat. So um, I brought pepperoni, dry pepperoni, and beef jerky. Uh, In the morning, I had 
six eggs, uh, 15 pieces of bacon, and three lamb chops. And I'm just like, okay, well, this will power me up. This will this will get me going in the morning, and I'll fly through this hike just eating beef jerky pepperoni. I have something good when I get back. So I never normally eat that much before I go hiking, which was fine. It didn't really affect me that much. But I, well, the one thing I feel like it triggered, and I've noticed this with being on the carnivore diet, is that I get hypoglycemic. And when I hike, I specifically try to kick myself into ketosis and then just power through tons of fats while I'm hiking, just so I have those ketones floating through my body. Because, you know, when you're doing, you know, 20, 25, 30 K, you know, eight, 10 hour hikes, you know, like you really need to make sure that those ketones are flowing through the body because like the feeling of being like hypoglycemic, you know, when you're in the backcountry is not, not a good feeling. It's not something that I like it. You know, when you can control that environment, you absolutely should. Now, what happened was, you know, even though I got this beef jerky and this pepperoni, when we got back, because of this whole COVID-19 thing and, you know, people freak out buying food, you know, we got to the grocery store and there just wasn't a lot of options for meat. You know, like I wanted to get this nice big fat steak and, you know, just power back some like real good meat. But, you know, like there wasn't the options, you know, so we ended up getting and we had to get these um, like more bacon You know, we had to get these farmer sausages, just like a few different varieties, uh, some eggs again. Now, I know you can eat eggs on the carnivore diet, and I'm trying to just simply because there's nutrients in it, but like eggs from the store have always messed with my stomach. Now, I can eat farm fresh eggs, you know, but eggs from the store have always messed with my stomach, and I'm feeling that every time I eat them, especially since I'm eating like six to eight, ten eggs at a time, I just kind of amplified that. You know, but never mind eating just like the really salty bacon, you know, twice in a row and, or twice in one day. You know, I am getting the bacon that's, you know, no antibiotics, nitrates and like hormone free, like all this kind of stuff. But, you know, it's just, it's a ton of salt in the curing and, you know, just not the best quality meat when you're on the carnivore diet. Then, you know, you take the sausages on top of that and it's the same thing. So just not a really good quality meat. And, I've kind of labeled this aspect to it. And when I see people online doing the same thing, you know, I, I reference this to dirty, dirty carnivore is, you know, kind of like the same thing as like dirty keto. You know, there's a good, clean way to be in ketosis and on a ketogenic diet. And there's a dirty way of doing it with, you know, like all the cheese and bacon and this, that and all this garbage food that'll still technically keep you in ketosis. But, um, it's just a real dirty way of doing it. So, um, that's how I felt all day Saturday. So I woke up on Sunday morning. I felt like shit. Um, then it happened to be super nice. I made this last minute decision. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going back out in the back country again. So dropped a line to a few friends. Everybody dropped what they're doing. We all headed into the back country. And then I realized, you know, okay, well, we're leaving in a half an hour. You know, I don't have any time to be able to prepare to go out. You know, I don't want to eat anything because I feel like shit and my stomach's still full and I feel gross and disgusting and I want to fast a little bit, you know, to be able to help flush all this junk through my system. You know, but I also know I need some food in my body because I'm going into the back country. So the only thing I had left was more beef jerky, more pepperoni from what I had left over from the day before. You know, so I pounded that back, you know, on the hike. You know, I did it intentionally fast and I pounded back that on the hike and... I just knew when I was eating, I just wasn't into it at all. I had like, I didn't even want to put it in my mouth. You know, when I got home that day, like I, I ate some real good quality chicken, just tons of chicken. Um, and it felt good. It felt good to kind of turn that curve, you know, and then on Monday, same thing, you know, it's just good quality meat, you know, like really fresh, good quality steak. You know, I had steak twice, uh, about 30 ounces of steak that day. You know, I just really tried to stay away from anything cured or, you know, any kind of meats that weren't good quality. Try to best stay away from beef jerky. Try to stay away from things like pepperoni and all that kind of stuff. Um, just because I find like it's, it's just messing with my stomach. So the reason why I'm kind of explaining all this is because when you're eating low quality meat, you know, meat that's meat, but it's not nutrient dense. Like there's not a lot of you know, good, healthy vitamins and minerals and everything in this meat is simply just meat, you know, like low grade, low quality stuff. Your body starts to crave other things. And that's one thing that I noticed after this weekend is, you know, like I haven't craved anything all through this diet. 
But I started craving, you know, like, like chocolate. You know, I started craving, like, all these little things that I wouldn't normally want to eat. I started craving nuts and I started craving seeds. And, you know, I'm like, why is this happening? But the one thing I realized is that, you know, when we're just eating a poor quality diet, I think no matter what diet you're on, when it's just poor quality nutrition, you know, like, that's when we crave all these things. You know, like, we're just, like, the the cravings were intense. You know, like, it was just fine battle. Like, it wasn't a battle I couldn't win, but it was a battle I didn't even want to entertain. You know, so when I started looking at it from the perspective of, like, look, why, why am I like this? It's like, well, look, like, like, you're not even setting yourself up for success. Like, you're doing something that's difficult already anyway. You know, but, like, you're not even trying to be able to do it properly. You know, like, these are the shifts, these are the pendulums, and this is the whole point behind the Let's Change Together campaign, because I am going to make mistakes along the way. I am going to struggle along the way. I am going to stack the cards against myself, and yes, I am going to not want to do it. You know, and that's what happened this weekend. That's what happened after this weekend, and I really wanted just to say, you know what? What's one day? Like, what? what's one day? What's one meal? You know, like, what's one piece of chocolate? And I was like, no, like, like come on. Like, like you're stronger than that. Like, why... Why would you do that? Why would you entertain that? Why would you wreck like 22, 23, 24 days worth of success, you know, for like one of these weak moments, especially since you know where these weak moments are coming from, you know, and this is the connection that I want to build with all you because it's like, it's the struggle. Like, let's change together. Let's struggle together. This has been the point of this entire campaign of going through this. And I knew it from the beginning. It just so happened that changing dads was a little bit easier than what I thought it was going to be, but I knew there was going to be low points. And I've definitely hit a big low point again. And this is what I feel like the kind of second or third low point that I've hit on this carnivore diet. You know, the the little bit of a struggle. But again, I'm using all of you Every single one of you guys that listens to this podcast and gives me all this feedback, I'm using all you just to not let you down. You know, like I need to be able to leverage people too. It's like the one thing about like working out, you know, like I realized with this whole, you know, self-isolation and minimizing your contact, like, like it's hard, you know, like the days when I'm just at home, like I just want to, you know, kind of like hang out right now. Like this, like COVID-19 thing, I feel like it's made me lazy as fuck. You know, it's kind of like creeping into like the other aspects, you know, with like nutrition and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm still powering through. I'm still working out. I'm still going for runs. I'm still going for hikes. I'm still lifting weights. You know, but I really realized that I love seeing my community every day. And this is you guys. You know, I love interacting with you guys. You know, I love when I get the DMs and the emails and the conversations that I get into based on the content that's on the podcast. You know, like I love all those aspects. You know, and that's why I don't want to let you guys down. That's what helps me power through this. And that's what helps me say, like, you know, I only have like four or five days left on this diet. You know, like, why would I have that piece of chocolate now? You know, like, why would I have, you know, like that handful of nuts now? You know, especially I know. So what I did yesterday is I went and picked up my beef livers and I'm like, you know what? This is going to help me turn the curve. So today I'm just going to pound back some beef liver and I'm going to get that nutrients in my body because I know that that's what my body wants and what it needs is searching for those nutrients. So today's going to be a good day. Today's going to be a good day because we all are going to make it a good day. And I'm going to leverage you and you're going to leverage me. And, you know, like we're going to have success together. We're going to change together. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to be successful. You know, and that's the only goal right now, especially in this COVID-19 day and age when, you know, everybody wants to be the person who has the worst information to be able to share with everybody else. You know, like let's just be successful. Today is going to be a day where, you just try to live your life as normally as possible and you connect with the things that you love and you connect with your community, you connect with your fitness, you connect with your exercise, you do things that are healthy for your mind and healthy for your body, you know, healthy for your mental health, your physical health, your emotional state, like all these things we need to prioritize right now because our lives are being turned upside down. You know, so when we have those weak moments, you know, we need to be able to leverage the situations that are going to make us successful. You know, and that's what I did with you guys. So if there's any way that I can help any single one of you, no matter how big or how small, you know, like reach out. Because this is the time for all of us as, you know, BC residents. This is the time for us as Canadian citizens. This is the time for, you know, us as our, 
human population around the world that we can band together and be able to help each other out. And I just want you all to know that I'm here for you. So let me help. Let's change together. Let's shift. Let's be successful. This is for all of us. Carnivore Update Day 25. Here we go. Peace out.